All right, we have our next problem author with us, John. Um, welcome. Hello. So you authored two problems, Nightwalk and Powering Test Lopolis. Uh, could you summarize the problems and, and their solutions? Yep, so Powering Test Lopolis is essentially just you're handed a 2D grid and you need to, of Bs, lowercase Bs and capital Ts, and you just need to check if there's a capital T next to every single lowercase b basically adjacent to it. So there are basically eight potentials for that. Um, and then I also wrote Nightwalk. And Nightwalk is basically, you're giving a position of a knight on a chessboard and a square where you want the knight to go. And you have to give all the shortest paths to get there. So it's a, uh, it's a BFS. And just using a queue is really the, the simplest way to solve that problem. And yeah, as for powering Teslopolis, the big, it doesn't seem very complicated. The main issue with it is the edge cases of if there's just one column or one row and you start to try to like check diagonals, then you're going to go out of range. And that's what I expected to see on a couple of the submissions. So, so what was your, what was your inspiration for these problems and their stories? Yeah. So, so powering Teslopolis is a problem that I gave to the comp sci 101 students called crop fields. And they had a really bad time with it. Like it was the worst. <laughs> like it was horrible. They had no idea. Uh, a lot of people had no idea how to do it. And, so I, took that and I was like, that'd make a great problem. Right. So <laughs> then I took it and the, I got the story, uh, Jack one off just said, Hey, what if you had giant Tesla coils next to buildings? And I was like, that's cool. <laughs> and, uh, so that's where I got the story for a powering Teslopolis. And I found it really funny because there's a whole bunch of references in that. Obviously, Tesla and ERT is an electrical resonant transformer, which is a Tesla coil. The Stormlight Mountains is a reference to Brandon Sanderson books. I think there's other random stuff in there. But uh, let's, as for Nightwalk, I just woke up one day and thought, huh, how would I do that? And then I did it and I was like, oh, that's a cool problem. And then I sat on it for a couple months after just doing it in my free time. And I was like, oh, that'd probably make a good HSPC problem. And then I asked Sumner and he said, yeah, that'd be great. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, there's, there's five solutions so far on that problem. And, and uh, I think that when we were, when we were talking about which problems to, uh, to actually use in competition, we had another chess problem that was just involving from a given square, where can the knight move? which is a subset of this problem. And I'm really glad that we went with a harder version because we definitely seem yeah. to need that to round out the top of this competition. Um, so on that note, like how many people do you think will actually solve Nightwalk? Uh, before we um, you have to know the graph theory, right? So you have to know how to use a queue. I mean, you can use a, you don't have to use a queue. You could do a DFS, but then you have to use Dijkstra's to keep track of everything. Um, so I think it's much better to just use a queue. And if you don't know what a queue is, I mean, you don't really have a chance, right? So it'll, how many people came in with that amount? Maybe we have 50 teams, right? Yep. Maybe five 20. has solved it so far. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe 20%. So maybe around 10. Um, yeah. This is my first time actually writing a problems. So. That's as for powering Teslopolis, once you see that there's a, it can be one column or one row, I think that most of the teams will end up solving. Probably at least half will solve that, if not more. Yeah, so, so. we already have on on that 18 teams solved. So, you know, you're, you're only like eight away from being almost half of the competition solving that problem. Because um, it looks like we have 55 teams total. Um, the last three looks like they dropped... Uh, dropped um, uh, last minute. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at some, some solutions. Uh, let me <laughs> just pull that, that up. This is, this is the first team to solve problem K. Uh, and they solved it in two attempts. This was their first attempt. Let's just look at the second attempt because that's the one that's more interesting, I think. Uh, this is Nightwalk. Um, so, uh, Unfortunately, it's JavaScript, so it's very verbose. But uh, yeah, any uh, I think that so this is this here computes the moves um, yep. that yep. the the knights can make. So that's a uh, what probably I expect. Um, but then let's look down here. Um, anything that you see here that that uh, uh, is interesting. 
Okay, so let's see, where are they? I've never actually used JavaScript before. I've avoided it like the plague. Um, <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> let's see where they actually, see, they have seen, so that's a set. So they have a set of basically, you have to keep track of where you've been because you can get infinite loops with knights because they can just move right back to where they came from. So they're keeping track of where they've been, which is good. Um, let's see where they're, it looks like they're returning moves.map. Yeah, so this so, is. Yeah, they're doing some interesting so, math. Wait, what, where's poses? Poses is. Yeah, what is poses? Oh, this is, not, is this is how they're doing the BFS, I think, because this is just a okay, for loop over the next positions that they could go to. Using. Okay. And knowing Kelly, of course, he's going to use like all sorts of functional programming stuff. Um, uh, yeah, because this is this filters just to make sure that we're in bounds. This reduces, I think, looking like it's just the concatenation of the list or something. Um, but it does look like, uh, where is it being added back? What I'm not seeing is where they're adding, oh, here, this, this thing here basically adds back the, the, the set of positions that you need to go look at next. Um, which is, it's interesting that they're storing the history alongside um, alongside the points to look at. That's something that I haven't seen before. Yeah, it's an interesting way to do the problem. So, but yeah, they're just, it looks like they're just doing a, uh, just doing a BFS, which is the way to go about it. So, and you mentioned on problem, problem H. So this is powering Teslopolis, uh, that there would be a lot of errors uh on on edge cases so this is this is one team that's been having a, a pretty hard time getting uh getting it right um could you walk us through some of the errors that you you see them making here yeah so it looks like they're starting by making a 30 by 30 grid which is the max that you can have and let's see where they start reading in so they just fill it up with x's right that's all they're doing there and then they're reading in the number of rows, the number of columns. And then, yeah, they're just writing to their grid. Okay, and then, okay. So here's, you see how they're saying if j greater than zero and grid i j minus one. So the j less than 29, j greater than zero. That's how they're checking to make sure that they're not going out of range. And I think that the main issue that they're having here is there's it's not always going to be of length 29 right like i can give mm. you a much smaller a much smaller one and you're gonna check you'll probably be going out of range if you aren't checking that edge properly keep scrolling down so they're doing what i did right you check left then you checked right they're basically checking around to see if they can find a t next to all of their b's so they just likely have a, an error in there that they're going out of range because they oh, keep this, failing. This looks case. like an error too. This else shouldn't be here, I don't think. Else, no. Because this, this is associated yeah. with this if statement. So this, I think, I'm not sure where they need this to be, but That's I think it needs yeah. to be they're somewhere. They're likely, they're likely just printing false too early based on if that last one is failing. That right, and, statement, and it, it right? looks like... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, they need an, uh, an, a, 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 this to be an if else block, I think, and then this might work because they're they're setting perfect to false, yeah. so they're only printing it once. But yeah. and uh, I don't think they're actually going to have out of range issues because they did fill everything up with X's, right? Um, but so, th the bounds checks for yeah, that's, that's I, I, they actually they actually might have. I think this. they'll work because since they filled since they filled it up with X's, it should still work. Yeah, that's that's true. So so it looks like their their one issue here is, is that, that these need to be the bottom. these yeah. these ones need to be else if instead of uh, instead of ifs. So they're they're very close on this. Uh, in fact, actually, nope, they still haven't solved. So they're they're still they're still struggling. They've had one more incorrect submission. Um, well, because they have those continue statements, right? That means 
that they should need those. Can you scroll that, out to the that bottom? That is true. They have a, because they have a continue statement there. So theoretically... Where is this else continue happen, going? Unless they get all the way to the end. Those that is true. Those are only going to affect the row-wise loop, right? It's not going to continue. I the, oh, I bet I know what it is. Though. This isn't sorted. What? This may not be sorted correctly. Oh... Because they're, yeah, they're going, they're going column row, row and it should be. You have to, you have to go by row, row column. column. It won't yeah, you have to go row directly. column. So, so that's that's really unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's another thing that can curb up teams on this problem because, uh, yeah, you need to, you really need to, to get that uh, that iteration order correct. Um, Speaking of this problem, uh, you can have uh, the iteration order wrong if you sort them at the end, but. They're currently not. They're not doing that. Yeah. So, what were you um, saying, Sam? Oh, news from the scoreboard. Uh, pin A team. Did they get up to second? This. Yes, they yeah, just was, solved they... it and got bumped up to their place in second. Look at that! Look at that, man! That is crazy. Um, yeah, because that eight attempts on uh, what problem is that? That's a. Uh, that's gonna the, hurt. Parsing multiplication, right? Part, yeah, just that, parsing that, that's the math in another universe. We actually have yeah. that interview coming up right after you. So, um, yeah, it looks like your problem night, night, night's walk here is really what's going to come down and distinguish the placings between this next uh, four or five, uh, next like fourth place, fifth place, sixth place. I think so. That'll yeah, be that end. I think the uh, obviously DP uh, one as well. Yeah, I I love I love my problem Nightwalk. I just woke up because I I like to play. I love playing chess, and uh, I, I just thought that'd be a cool problem to have. So awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely. Um, <laughs> do you have we talked about how many teams you expect to solve? I can't remember. For Nightwalk, yeah, I expect probably around ten percent. Right, okay. so probably around ten teams. Not no, that's that's bad math on my part. 10 teams would be about 20%, right? Because currently we have about four or five. Yeah, I, think we're I bet a handful more will get it before the end. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that the podium is already... Well, I guess technically it's not set, but I'm I pretty sure it is. Think, I don't think Cherry Creek can come into No, because they have time. too many yeah, incorrect it's, it's very... submissions. But I think that Lions could potentially... If they saw Lions... both L and M Like quickly. now. But we're yeah. 120 minutes in. So that is true. It's going to be a long, long points. Time. That would be plus two forty. So they no, they wouldn't be able to. They'd be at like a fourth. But it's definitely a competition for fourth at this point. So that's uh, it's going to yeah. be exciting to see. And and there's plenty of teams that are in striking distance at this point. And um, even even looking here at uh, um, I'd say even all the way down to like ninth and tenth place have have chances to to get up into you know fourth fifth place um for sure it looks like we have yeah, a submission it's pretty, pretty remarkable how quickly that uh these all were solved for next year uh we're gonna have to bring out the big guns yeah well so. so so one thing that's interesting is you know we were kind of we were more or less doing this comp uh, setting the competition such that uh fellowship of the string which is the stem school team would be kind of the the top um, because that's the top in the previous two years. They, they've won it out, right? Um, yep. And to be quite frank, if it was just them as the top team again, this competition would be fairly well balanced. The problem is that, or not problem, the, the great <laughs> thing about it is that we have a bunch of teams who have come in uh, and really sh put on a great show um, and just uh, really just blown everyone out of the water um, as far as, uh, as, far as these, these problems go. And um, yeah, maybe we'll have to pull out. Uh, maybe we should just throw in something that's NP complete and not tell them. That's what I'm thinking. I already have one in mind. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's talk about that offline because we're gonna need some uh, uh, some more <laughs> difficult problems next year. Um, is there anything that you want to say before before we let you go? Well, I'm. I mean, I did really enjoy writing problems. This is the first time I've done it, and I I definitely think I'll be back writing more. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. See you, John. See you.